I am going to walk you through the step by step process on how you can become a cybersecurity analyst. Let's get to it. But anyways, disclaimer, I know a lot of these guys out there who actually plan in these boot camps or these companies that are doing these boot camps or whatever the case is, they're probably going to feel salty about this. You're going to get mad because I'm going to show you guys the step-by-step -step process on how you can do this without even spending five thousand dollars ten thousand dollars without even spending a thousand dollars what you need is probably about two hundred dollars for you to get this done and dusted you're done but it does require some level of discipline if you do not have that i would say you need to either gather that courage and gather that discipline and get it going all right so the first thing that we're going to talk about today it's very simple it's called what you know what you know meaning basically Whatever you know, literally in the general sense, if you're in the help desk industry, because you have people in the help desk industry, you have people in the in the systems admins industry that actually wants to move over to the cybersecurity side of things, okay? Or if you're an individual who works in healthcare, you work in customer service, anything of that sort, right? You can move into the cybersecurity industry. And I'm gonna walk you through the step-by-step -step process, like I said. So let's say if you're in the help desk industry, you do some sysadmin stuff, let's say Active Directory, you do some RDP stuff. If you're a sysadmin, you do some Active Directory where you use blue policies or use those type of stuff, right? Yes, that's great. That is something that is transferable that you can actually use in the cybersecurity industry as well. And I will tell you why or how, all right? If you're in the customer service industry as well, great. That is something that you can actually use because you need to be a people person to be in the cybersecurity industry because you are going to be interacting with people a lot. I'll give you an example. In my field in the cybersecurity industry, I do a campaign phishing, phishing campaign, right? Well, I send out email templates where if you click on a particular link, it's going to tell you that you literally have fallen victim to a phishing campaign, right? And with that, after that, I have to interact with you. You manage to let you know that, hey, this is what you're supposed to do. This is what you're supposed to look out for whenever you get these type of emails, right? So you have to be a people person to be able to learn or know how to interact with people to get the understanding or to get them to understand the information that you're trying to get across. Make sense? That's good? Yes. If you're in the healthcare sector or whatever sector that you are in, there is some sort of transferable skills that you have that you can bring into the cybersecurity industry. Literally, that is what you know. So bringing that on board and encompassing it with the tools and then the training that I'm going to show you today would make you a well-rounded candidate to get your foot through the door. Next one that we're going to talk about today is what most people spend a lot of money on, which would be the boot camps, the learning, whatever the case is. Most of the time when you go on YouTube and you type in cybersecurity, there are so many resources out there. But then if you're an individual that wants to get in the first time, it becomes confusing, right? You actually want to get into a point where you know I'm going to study this and then study that and then study this and I know I'm good, right? That's step by step process. That's what I'm going to show you today. Don't worry about that. So when it comes to the training part, which is the point two, training when it comes to the training part there's a couple of things that i want you to focus on forget all the youtube stuff forget everything just take it out of your mind and follow these steps that i'm going to show you first training that i want you to take is on coursera it is the google Cybersecurity search right i'm going to repeat that google Cybersecurity search the main reason why i want you to take this Cybersecurity search is because it gives you that foundation that that fundamental foundation that you need to be able to get your foot through the door right and i probably hold a little bit but with this one, it would actually give you that foundation because it will take you through vulnerability management. It will take you through how to utilize Python in your cybersecurity world. It will take you through how to utilize SQL in there. It will take you through how to utilize some um, vulnerability management tools on there to make sure that it's giving you that foundation, that fundamentals, because every single thing you do, any career that you choose in your life, believe me or not, you need some sort of foundation to make sure that you actually you know, good when you start the job, you're not like all blank and not knowing what's going on. Okay. So the first one would be the Google uh, cybersecurity cert. The next one would be the Microsoft cybersecurity cert. The reason why I included this one in there is mainly because it actually dive a lot deeper when it comes to the Microsoft ecosystem, right? Which is the uh, Microsoft 365, the, the, the security sentinel, all that stuff. So all those same tools and all these EDR tools that Microsoft is actually going to show you would be very beneficial to you depending on the career path that you choose in your cybersecurity journey, okay? It's a specific career that you have to choose after you should do all this. You can't just say, I studied all this and then I'm a cybersecurity expert. No, you have to choose a specific career path as to if you want to be a SOC analyst, you want to be an RMF, you want to be a cybersecurity engineer, you want to be a cybersecurity and you know, all those stuff. There's a lot of stuff that you can do when you study all this, okay? So first one will be the Google search, the next one will be the Microsoft search. And I'm going to keep links in the description below. So make sure that you are actually following this 
as well okay next one is you have to subscribe to this channel i don't know why you're looking at me i'm giving you great information you have not subscribed please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification and if i upload new videos you would get these notifications as well but the next one that i'm actually going to talk about is the fact that you have to utilize the resources the free resources which is youtube right youtube has literally tons millions of resources on that platform and the main reason why i brought youtube to third is because you have to understand the fundamentals because like i said you have to understand by actually studying with the google cert and also the microsoft cert once they give you that fundamentals then you would actually know what you actually want to specifically study does that make sense but you can't just go on youtube and just type in cybersecurity and then start studying from there no it doesn't work that way right once you get that understanding with the active directory the ous uh group policies uh, uh um, the microsoft 365 centennials cloud strike all all that stuff then you would actually come on youtube because then okay you need specific more information about a specific topic or a specific subject then you come on youtube type in let's say i want to study more about cloud strike or i want to learn more about mimecast or mimecast basically and then it would go a lot more deeper as to the videos that other people have done make sense make sense yeah okay so once you take that foundation then you can move on there and the other resource that will actually show you to help you out a lot after you've taken all these courses this is literally the easiest one that I think you can actually do or the first one you should even do before even becoming a cybersecurity expert, which is computer networking. And when I talk about computer networking, a lot of people look at me like, why? I could just take the Security Plus certification and I'm good. No, 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 not the Security Plus, computer networking. The reason why I talk about computer networking is mainly because you have to understand how computers work for you to even be able to use it. You have to understand how these computers network with each other. So let's say if I type in Facebook.com, what goes on behind the scenes for Facebook interface to actually come up for me to see Facebook.com? You have to understand because if you do not understand the system in itself or how they interact with each other, then you would not be able to safeguard it right you have to understand the process that goes through every system for you to be able to safeguard it if you do not then you'll be one you'll be in one bubble and not know what to do whenever you get on some sort of incident or whatever right you have to understand how these systems work so udemy would be a great platform for you to learn computer networking you can actually use youtube as well because there are great resources on youtube that you can actually learn from and like i said i will put some of these resources in the description below so you can actually learn and study from these ones so that is those for the training part so with the training part those are the points that i think you should follow or i know you should follow because i follow that part self-studying and remember like i said it will take a lot of discipline and you should be ready to actually do this if you are not ready i would literally have want you to sit down think about it if cybersecurity is really what you want to do because if you're not disciplined enough to sit down and study for at least two to three hours a day then i don't know right because you really have to be hungry for this career field if you're not hungry for it it becomes very difficult so the next one that we're going to talk about the next pointer so we started with what you know we started with it and then we went over to the training now we're going to talk about the next pointer that is very important as well that is the decision time so after you've studied everything you need to study and followed all the procedures that i've actually shown you in the training section then you need to make a decision when i talk about making a decision i'm talking about the career path that you want to take as a cybersecurity analyst either if you want to do the SOC analyst part or if you want to do the cybersecurity analyst part or if you want to do the rmf because all of them you end up analyzing stuff right now let's break it down when i talk about the cybersecurity analyst with the cybersecurity analyst what you do is you do more of the front end stuff well it depends on the company that you're working for some companies will have you do back end and front end and i know a lot of you probably be thinking what do you mean by front end back end okay now let me dive deeper if you're a cybersecurity analyst the front end stuff what you'll be doing is you'll be running the vulnerability management test which you'd be using let's say tenable nessus you'll be doing those no before efficient campaigns every single month you'll be doing the assets inventory to know where these assets are or where your servers your your laptops your workstations are if you have workstations of course where they are just to make sure that you have a you know a high level count of there to make sure your company is good so if somebody leaves the company you know where you, the assets go where you guys are going to re-image these laptops blah 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 all those those good stuff that's what you'll be doing as a cybersecurity analyst in some companies right like i said some companies will have you do 
everything. But if you go to a company that has a big or nice structure where they have everything broken down, then it would be a lot easier for you, okay? Where you would know specifically what you're supposed to do. And it's not a one hat fits all because every single company is different, right? Now, if you want to go into the sock industry, literally in sock, all you're doing is monitoring stuff. You will be monitoring your systems. You'll be monitoring every single system that they have. Using tools like Dynatrace, using tools like Splunk. So if you get any sort of incident, all you do is you investigate those incidents to make sure that, hey, is this something that's malicious or not, right? So if it's not malicious, then you're good to go. If it is malicious, then, you know, you guys work on how to resolve it or how to do these patches or whatever the case is. Or if it is malicious or if it's not malicious, you put it down as a false positive and you keep it going. But sometimes it does happen, right? You get a lot of false positives. That does not mean that if you see everything, it is false positive. So that is literally what these SOC analysts, they're doing, right? That's literally the monitoring. That is why it is 24 seven. The monitoring throughout the year, like 365 days a year. All right. So from the SOC analyst, the next one that you can actually focus on, if you do not want to do anything technical would be the risk management framework. So with the risk management framework, all you do on there literally is the fact that you're making sure that these companies are following the step-by-step -step policies and processes these government entities have put together for them to follow. Meaning it could be PCI DSS, it could be FedRAMP, it could be the FISMA, it could be the NIST. Literally, they are following every single step, like the, say the password, the assets management, the asset management, every single thing that you're supposed to do is literally a list, right? It's a step-by-step -step list that they follow to make sure that they safeguard these companies. And most of the time you have third parties that would come in to do this, uh, which would be you if you go that route, right? Or you could have a company where they have a lot of systems and they need you to do it. So when it comes to uh, them doing their policies or doing anything that has to do with policies that they pass, right? And they get that badge to let them know that they're compliant. Literally, that's all you would do. And it has nothing to, for you to do with anything being technical or anything of that sort. That's if you don't want to go the technical route, then that's another route that you could take as well. All right. So that is the decision time where you actually decide on what field that you want to get into. There are several numerous ones of them. So in the comment section, if you want to know more about any of the ones that I've spoken about, let me know and I will go more in depth or I will create a video about it to make it a lot easier for you to actually get into the industry as well. So the last one that we're going to talk about today is one that every single individual or most people get comfortable with when they get into the cybersecurity industry. I don't know why, but it does happen. All right. And that leads to a lot of people losing their jobs. So the last one that we're going to talk about is continuous education. I know, I know, I know most people get comfortable when it gets to the cybersecurity industry because once they're in, they feel like, oh yeah, my company is going to be using this tool for forever. Yeah, no, they're not. Most of these tools become old fashioned. They become legacy tools. So these companies try to improve every single day, right? So let's say if we started with Excel to do, let's say pivot tables or whatever. Now companies are using Tableau, Power BI and stuff. And those are going to go away very soon as well. And other tools are going to come in. That's the same with cybersecurity. You have tools like Arctic Wolf. You have tools like Mimecast, which is the email filtration. You have tools like Know Before. You have tools like Canary Wolf. You have tools like Cloudflare. You have tools like Sentinel. You have tools like Splunk. It keeps going on and on. It's so many of them, right? And companies cannot literally use all of them. So there'll be specific different ones based on the budget that they can go with. And you as a cybersecurity analyst need to know these tools in and out because you're going to set it up and you're also going to make sure that you're monitoring whatever the system is doing on those tools, right? So you have to be willing to learn. You have to be willing to better yourself and not even for your company, for you to be able to move or job skip, you know, job hop, whatever they call it. But right? if you want to move to a new company, you have to learn the tools that you use, right? So you have to do uh, uh, um, some continuous education to better yourself, to understand how these companies work, because every company is different on what they do. OK, so, guys, this is the step by step process. And remember, this is not even going to cost you 200 bucks. You literally have to sign up for Coursera and you're good. You need to sign up for Udemy and you're good and you buy two or three courses and Udemy is running promotions every single day, every single day. That's $200 and you're good. $200 will get you into the cybersecurity industry. And right after that, I am going to make a video on how to optimize your resume after you're done going through all these processes to make sure that you are getting in the field. OK, I do hope that I gave you some great gems today till I see you again. Stay blessed, be blessed, God bless. Peace.